Part two. Yo, so like I said, all you hear is, bitch, you still fucking that nigga. And all I'm like, is like this. And I, I'm working at the time. I'm working with another couple and I hear them ar arguing and yelling at the end of the table. Now, one of the things about this girl, this particular girl, she was a shit starter, right? She liked to start shit. She liked drama. Like it got her blood boiling. Like it used to make her horny. So I know what type of person she is. And I knew what she was doing in this moment, whether she was doing that to get a rise out of her husband, get a rise out of me. I know to stay clear of this chick, right? The husband stands up, slaps the table. Now he didn't have a few drinks, right? So he come walking towards me. So I stand up. Now this dude is not tall at all. Like not tall, like a hair taller than a toddler. And so he's looking up at me and he's like, you know what? You are out of line. And I'm like, listen here, little buddy, you need to talk to your wife. So he like sort of like pushes me, but he's short. So he like pushes my belly. <laughs> like, so, so he pushes my belly. And so I like grab the top of his head and push it back. Right. And he swings like he swings, but he's short, like he's short. And so he swings and like, it sort of comes across like where his, his arm fully extended, come across my, my elbow. Like, you know what I'm saying? His shoulder area. And listen, I'm not losing my cool at this mo moment. I'm not trying to fight this dude. I'm more so trying to, you know, push him off of me and wait for somebody, you know, the, the situation to get controlled. So old girl, she's like, you know, Dante, you need to calm down. Dante, you need to calm down. And so she pulls him, and it's funny because she tall too. She like 5'10". So she pulls him off of me, like almost like picking up a toddler from behind. Dude wasn't tall. It, I'm, I'm not joking. It's just he was he was very height challenged. Um, So she pulls him up off of me. And so that's when a few more family members come in and get in between us, right? And so the one lady, she like, oh, I'm so sorry. She like, she was embarrassed. And I was just like, hey, maybe I should, you know, wrap this up and just come back another day, da 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 And so it was some people like, no, I still want to give my life insurance. I done, did, 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 did. I done took off work. I didn't still need this this policy. My Keisha, she's like, well, we just going to leave and, you know what I'm saying, we'll, you know what I'm saying, I'm sorry, I apologize, whatever. And so before she walked out, I was like, look, um, I don't feel comfortable, you know, pushing this policy through. Why don't, you know, I try to plug you in with another agent, da, 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 you know what I'm saying? And take it from there. And so she was like, OK, that sounds good. You know, I'm sorry. I apologize. And so they leave. So I go back in. I write like maybe two or three more policies and then I leave. So I'm on my way home that night and I get a text from Lakeisha and she's like, he put me out and I don't know, have anywhere else to go. I'm at your house right now. And I'm like, no, see, Wakisha had a particular set of skills. She was a shit starter. She was an arguer, but she was a porn star as well. When I tell you the things that that woman could do in a bedroom, I'm not even gonna lie. Part of my adult life, I've made really good decisions, but there was a part, there was a time, there was a season where I really just didn't care. You know what I'm saying? I was just doing stuff and I just didn't care. I'm just gonna say that. And my ego sometimes will get the best of me. Like the ability to have control over a woman or to have a woman like that infatuated with you, you know, takes a lot of responsibility as a man. Um, and you got to start to care about your own personal character and integrity, uh, how you deal with women in general, because that's where you fall into that womanizer, you know, narcissist, you know, tendencies, you know what I'm saying? So I knew this was a bad idea for her to be at my house. And so I text her because I was probably about 30 minutes away from my house. And so I text her and I was like, hey, is there anywhere you can go? Can I check you into a hotel? Can I do that? And she's just like, no, this relationship is over. I don't even know why I married him. I just need to stay here tonight. Now, it was late. In my head, what I should have done is just unlock my door and let her in. And then I go somewhere else and just let her stay there tonight. Wake up in the morning, figure it out. Right. 
but I ain't do it. I went back to the house. When I went back to the house, she was sitting in her car in the driveway. I let her in. Now it's late. It's probably probably like ten, eleven, ten, almost ten, eleven. Um, cause I done been I done been out all day, right? So I'm tired. I'm hungry. You know what I'm saying? And she come in. She's like one of them real comfortable people. So when she walked in, I was like, Look, was this your plan? Was this your plan? Like I I questioned her right off rip. I'm like, Yo, was this your plan? The whole time, you know what I'm saying? Like with the girl, your your her cousin, all of it. Was this the plan? And she was just like, no, it wasn't the plan. No, it wasn't the plan. As soon as I walked in and I saw you, I just, you know, it, it shocked my system to see you. And I just started thinking about, you know, the past and mistakes and just living this life I'm living now is a lie. And, you know, how you used to make me feel and just the good times we had. And I know I made some mistakes and you know, this, this, and the third, I just wasn't ready for that relationship at that time. <sighs> Y'all, so I'm, at this point, I'm like, okay, whatever. So she's sitting on the couch. I go in the kitchen, in the kitchen, trying to make me something to eat, right? My phone go off. I'm looking at my phone. I'm staring at my phone. And my, it's my next door neighbor. And he's like, hey, Tom, you know, he was outside across the street. You know, he'd be smoking the, the devil's lettuce. And so he was outside across the street and he was like, dude, is somebody on the side of your house looking in the window? And I'm like, now what y'all don't know about Tom, Tom is a, I wish a motherfucker would type Nick. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I wish a motherfucker would. So I go upstairs, I grab the, you know, the wrench, you know what I'm saying? I come downstairs with the tool. I grab my, my phone, turn the flashlight on, got the gun in my hand. I go outside. I'm looking, I'm looking, I don't see nobody. I'm looking again. I don't see nobody. I text dude back and I'm like, hey, I don't see nobody. He was like, yeah, he he went to the back and then he cut through and went to the other side of the street. So I'm I'm going through and then so I'm like, I still didn't see nobody. So I call him and I'm like, so I call dude and I'm like, hey, what he look like? He was like, it's a short dude, like stocky. And like he was on like, and then I could see where he was standing on like a milk crate to look through the window. And I'm like, I come in, I'm like, hey man, do dude know where I live? And she was like, no, there's absolutely not. And I was like, well, you got a tracker on your car or your phone is, you know, basically telling him where I'm at. Cause it, it sounds like he was just here looking through the window. So she like shocked, you know what I'm saying? And so she get her stuff and she get up and leave. And so I'm like, I mean, at this point, I'm like, I'm happy. She gone. She gone. She's she shot out of there, right? Y'all, what happened next is something out of a freaking movie. Look, stay tuned for part three because, yeah, it gets interesting. Like I said, wow.